Hello, Helen. It's just Tracy Wilson, Clee Camp calling, uh, videoing, if you will. Um, I'm sending you a video message because I thought it would be more personable. You haven't had an opportunity to talk in person for a variety of reasons. So I thought I would just send you a video note. Um, with the baby here and everything, I, I'm not going to be able to make it to um, council meeting to watch at the time that it's on, but I wanted to kind of run through a couple of things. Um, one thing I, I wanted to compliment um, the uh, administration about was sort of switching gears after COVID started about how they were going to do homework, et cetera, um, with students. And I thought that was very um, admirable in admitting that, wow, what we thought we were going to do, we can't do it, we have to revise it. So that's probably like the strongest transparent move I've seen the district make in the past year. So I thought that was a very good. Um, I think it's something that's going to be an ongoing uh, process of learning on the fly, kind of, if you will. Um, Rice Matters Friends does not support um, Dr. Steepleman's um, contract extension. I noticed in the contract online, it doesn't say what his current salary is or what's proposed. Um, and also, it should get more than 48 hours. It needs to have 48 hours notice, and it just wasn't put up until Friday. Same thing with the um, SESI contract. Um, not everything was there. And then when we requested information about it, it got moved to a 7.30 a.m. Uh, meeting, which is really early. Um, besides that, my hope, since elections are coming up, and I know that's important to you, is that going forward, the school district is less resistant to public criticism particularly in around issues of equity, it would be a smart move in our opinion to actually formalize having an equity committee that includes uh, members of the community, organizations and families by having sort of an ad hoc, not real committee where there's no minutes and no regular reporting out, have no way to know where the district really is in terms of um, measuring its equity or how it's collaborating with partners, et cetera. So if they're serious about that, there's, you have a, a formal committee that reports out and um, it's very transparent what's happening. And so we haven't seen that. Um, the other thing is that I hope, one of the things I'd like to see from you is that there is a more concerted effort to hold um, Dr. Steepleman accountable for being forthcoming and to not become petulant because he's criticized by the public. That's our job um, as citizens to hold him and the board accountable. And I think the way that they've responded, particularly over the seclusion and restraint, the construction of the rooms, the total lack of transparency was very off-putting. Um, that is a big reason for our lack of uh, support. Um, we're also not very happy with uh, the arrangement between the school district and the police department. We don't think it's appropriate to uh, uh, say that uh, learning to uh, respect the authority of the police is the number one job that they should have there. Um, we don't think that that is a, a factor or an effective equivalent of what community policing is about. So superficially, you've got an agreement there, but I think in terms of a constructive practice, since it's not wedded to any kind of formal equity committee, it's purely performative. So um, those are important things. There are real harms that were done by calling the police on students who were um, in, you know, wrongly identified. Calling the police on children is equally horrible. So somehow or another, the administration needs to get those, um, those items I want to stay under control um, but to be more proactive and in terms of their outreach with the community. Anyways, I do hope to get to speak with you in person. If not, we can video back and forth. But I wanted you to see my body language to see that I'm not angry. I am having some very direct um, responses to you. But I, I think the biggest uh, two things for me and our organization looking forward is that 
you hold Dr. Seaton accountable. And sometimes that means having some very direct conversation publicly. I think the public can handle that. We should see that. Not chastising the public for being disagreeable when they have every right to be. And learning to handle and take in critique um, in a much better way than the organization has. And to set up a, um, a, real, a real authentic um, equity committee. Um, I think you also need a special education um, parent advisory committee. Um, they can be molded together so that all those interests are represented or they can be separate. But those are two big needs. I don't think that you can implement um, equity inclusion practices by having an ad hoc committee. Um, I will close by saying that um, I stand firm and we stand firm on our position that Carla Ronan is not qualified for her position. I thought that the way that the school district responded to our very detailed complaint of why was, uh, it, showed, it said a lot about the organization's, um, I would say, lack of maturity and ability to take critique and to take that critique and, and work with it in a productive way. It's really important, as the ACLU stated, um, to be able to quantify, to discuss um, how you're measuring, how do you know what you're doing is working. And doing more training is not an effective answer for um, what, what is it doing to your organization to uh, make it more inclusive. And I also wanna say sometimes using that language of diversity and inclusion and equity so much, we lose track of like what it really is and what it should really look like. And given the disparities that the school district has, I'm concerned that we're not there. Um, I also take exception, and we've spoken to many people about this in Race Matters and other local groups, the way the data is presented in terms of black students versus all. Um, the response, again, from Dr. Siegelman to that concern is really unacceptable. And um, we have too many examples of school districts that do a much better job with data rather than playing to um, a deficit mindset in terms of black students. So those are my quick thoughts. I look forward to hearing back from you. Thanks.